tinnitus. That's that ringing, buzzing, or humming sound you hear when there's nothing outside to make that noise. Everybody has tinnitus now and then, maybe for a second or two, maybe five seconds. Some people have it for a long time. Not just minutes or hours, but days, weeks, months, years, decades. Well, there's hope for quieter days ahead. We know why a person develops tinnitus, and we know how to reduce actual tinnitus, not just cover it up or get used to it. Most tinnitus is caused by brain remodeling that occurs after partial hearing loss. We can see this brain remodeling in images with functional MRI that shows blood flow in people with tinnitus and without tinnitus, and it looks different. We also see before and after treatment, and it looks different. This presentation will illustrate what happens in the brain to cause tinnitus and how brain remodeling can be used to reorganize the nerve connections so that tinnitus is reduced significantly in many people. We do not understand it perfectly yet, but this explanation seems to be very close to reality and is supported by successful treatment. The sound that we normally hear comes from outside the ear. But it's not sound until we hear it. It's merely the vibration of air molecules. Air vibrates hair cells in the inner ear, or cochlea. The hair cells are arranged in order of tone frequency, like piano keys. So a particular speed of air vibration will vibrate a specific hair cell, like an electric piano. The hair cell changes the vibration into an electrical signal. We still do not hear it until it travels as electrical signals to our brain. From the inner ear, cochlea, the signal travels to the brain stem, then up to both sides of the brain. This is the same path of sound seen from the side view. In the brain, the nerve paths are also organized like electric piano keys. Tones are lined up next to each other from high to low. Each tone has a specific spot in the brain where it's perceived. High notes are on the inside of the temporal lobe, here. That's normal hearing, but how does tinnitus develop? Like a piano losing some of its keys, damage occurs to the hearing machinery, usually hair cells in the cochlea. Now, a portion of the sound from the environment cannot be signaled to the brain. In the brain, the specific spot that normally would perceive that specific tone or range of tones now hears less or nothing. The vibration never travels beyond the inner ear cochlea. It is as if the vibration of the air never happened. If the neurons in the brain are not stimulated naturally, they begin to get unhealthy and fire spontaneously. You perceive this as tinnitus, ringing, buzzing, etc. That's nice information, but to understand why, you must have more details. To help you understand, consider the similarities between a muscle and a neuron. Healthy neurons provide normal hearing and rare, if any, tinnitus. Muscles need exercise and nourishment to stay healthy, so do neurons. A neuron needs to be regularly stimulated or fired and nourished to stay healthy. So muscles exercise helps keep it strong. Neuron stimulation helps keep it healthy. Healthy neurons provide normal hearing and rare tinnitus. Muscles get exercise by lifting and nourishment through blood to stay healthy. A neuron is fired by having its receptor exposed to a stimulus, like vibration in the cochlea, and nourished through the blood with oxygen and glucose to stay healthy. Good neuron stimulation and normal hearing the air vibrates 
vibrations enter the cochlea where specific electric piano keys, so to speak, which are nerve endings, are stimulated. That's normal healing, normal hearing, and healthy neurons. Lack of stimulation to some neurons causes partial hearing loss or unhealthy neurons. Being unable to exercise a muscle results in muscle wasting. Similarly, losing ability to hear from damage to the cochlea means neurons between the ear and the brain cannot be fired. Unhealthy neurons provide imperfect hearing and occasional tinnitus. Muscles that are not nourished and exercise get weaker. So do neurons, but they also get unhealthy. An unhealthy neuron has two stages of poor health. Stage one, it needs extra stimulation to fire. Of course, if the cochlear hair cells, the nerve endings, which are really nerve beginnings, are dead or severely damaged, it cannot provide extra stimulation through the normal channels of hearing. Partial hearing loss. With this, you have some air vibration, and the working neurons are stimulated, which is like the working keys on an electric piano, the nerve endings, but you don't hear some sound because the unworking neurons didn't communicate. Unhealthy neurons provide imperfect hearing and occasional tinnitus. An unhealthy neuron has two stages of poor health. The second stage, it fires spontaneously. That would be it getting extra stimulation, but if it doesn't get it, it will fire spontaneously. Very unhealthy neurons, partial hearing loss, and frequent tinnitus. Muscles can get so malnourished or tired that they twitch or cramp. So do neurons, but they fire spontaneously. So here we have muscle fatigue or cramping and neuron spontaneously firing. Whatever the brain normally perceives with that neuron, whether it's taste, smell, sound, tingling, pain, light, etc., will be perceived, but not normally. It may be at the wrong time, volume, or character. Skip this page if too many details confuse you. The reason a neuron fires spontaneously is even more complex, but it will give you the crash course here in about 50 words. Neuron stimulation causes gene response. It's abbreviated IAEG for immediate early gene response. Gene response causes production of proteins, and proteins, because of their negative charge and involvement in ATP or energy production, keep the cell at a charge that is far away from threshold or firing. Thus, lack of stimulation results in neurons firing too easily or spontaneously because they cannot stay away from threshold or firing. Unhealthy neurons and tinnitus. You hear sound whether or not there is any outside air vibration. So here's normal sound and air vibration stimulating the working neurons. They all stay healthy hear the correct sound, but that center neuron, not normally stimulated, grows unhealthy and begins to fire spontaneously. You hear sound that's not really there. So that explains the cause of tinnitus. How can tinnitus be diminished though? In the past there were two approaches, restore hearing and distract with other noise. First. We'll briefly describe how those two work, then we'll introduce the newest approach. Restore hearing with a cochlear implant. If the procedure is successful, it can restore health and function to the neurons. This reduces the tinnitus. So here's the cochlear implant. Here's sound, and it communicates to all these neurons. Neurons are normally stimulated, become more healthy. 
Cochlear implants are an amazing invention and involve a skilled surgery. In children who have never heard, the improvements can be amazing for brain development. In adults, there are several issues to consider. We're beyond the scope of this presentation. Now there's distraction with other noise. With the right extra noise, you become less aware of tinnitus. This helps many people sleep, but there are no lasting improvements. Distraction with other noise is an old faithful in helping people tolerate their tinnitus. Unfortunately, it doesn't address the root of the problem, and it's just plain irritating for some people. Distraction is not a bad thing, it just doesn't improve the condition. And now, introducing the newest approach, auditory discrimination therapy. Actually, we've even taken it a step further. We now have circumscriptive auditory discrimination therapy. That difference may be critical for your recovery, but you don't need to remember it for now. Continue to see how it works. Auditory discrimination therapy. Maximize functional neuron pathways to restore neuron health. You begin by carefully listening to tones near your dysfunctional neurons. So you're carefully, specifically stimulating neurons around your unhealthy one. You train 30 minutes a day for 30 days, carefully learning to distinguish between one sound and another. Over time, neurons grow. The result is that the neurons decrease their spontaneous firing, recruited for useful brain function, and are kept healthy. There is hope. The research using this newest technique called auditory discrimination therapy has proven results of reducing the tinnitus based on the tinnitus handicap inventory in about 50% of people by 27%. That's not perfect, but it is good and without surgery or any more than 30 minutes per day for 30 days. We're still working on the research. What does it take to maintain that long term? It will probably take some effort, but not as much as it did get you that place. But we have even higher hopes. There's more hope. With our understanding of functional neurology and natural synergistic approaches, we've improved on the previous techniques significantly. We put improved in quotations because we haven't proven this result yet with research. That's what our present clinical trials are about, but our expectations are high. Don't let sore muscles stop your workout. Previous research showed that a moderate percentage of the participants had their tinnitus get worse before it got better. We've not seen this in our research yet, but it makes sense. Remember the slide where the unhealthy neuron began to get stimulation? Tinnitus may get a little worse before it gets better, but remember, when you start to work out, your muscles may get a little sore before you start getting strong. There is hope. The brain is amazing. This is an amazing process, and it takes an amazing little amount of effort to accomplish. After a couple days, this will be a breeze and you'll be well on your way to quieter days. I wish you well.